Greetings, River Lady here, and it is a beautiful mid-50s day here on the Concord River. I thought I would do a video about helping you create a wildlife habitat in your yard. But before I do, I'm going to show you my pair of geese that came back again this year. So hopefully I'll get goslings again. All right, let's go. Before I get started, I want to say that I'm not receiving any money for any of the products I mentioned during this video. If you subscribe to my channel, you may remember that in summer of 2021, my property was certified as a wildlife habitat. The certification came through a program being run by the National Wildlife Federation, and the good news is they're running it again in 2022. I'll put information about the program in the description below. There is a checklist. You have to meet certain criteria in order to have your property certified as a wildlife habitat. For example, you have to provide an environment that encourages the animals in your area to raise young. So it could be as something as simple as putting out nesting materials for the birds to stay and build their nests in your yard. One of the main areas of the checklist is to provide a form of sustenance for the wildlife in your area, which is basically providing food. So for example, I love black swallowtail butterflies, and to make sure that they're happy in my gardens, I plant parsley, which is what their caterpillars prefer to eat. A popular plant in many gardens is the butterfly bush, and that's because a lot of people feel that, hey, it's called a butterfly bush, butterflies will like it. And it's true, butterflies do like butterfly bushes. But even though the butterfly bush is an attractive nectar source for adult butterflies, it doesn't serve as a host plant for our native butterfly caterpillar. Butterfly species that can use a wide variety of plants as host plants, it's okay if there's a butterfly bush in the garden. But for the monarch butterfly that can only use milkweed as a host plant, it's not a good thing. I suggest adding milkweed to your garden along with your butterfly bush. You'll get to see cool monarch butterfly caterpillars eating the leaves and you'll be helping to support the declining population of monarch butterflies. One of the easiest ways to find out what plants you should have in your garden is to use a plant finder. All you do is enter your zip code and bingo! You get pages and pages of information on plants that you need to support native wildlife from annuals to perennials to trees to shrubs. For example, one of the plants on the list is the hibiscus shrub, which I absolutely love hibiscus plants. They come in such an array of colors and they support 21 species of butterflies and moths. Here's another little gem that's on the list that I love to have in my garden and it's morning glories. I love walking in the garden in the morning with my mug of coffee and seeing the bees zipping in and out of the flowers. It's so cool. Maybe you want to tell me, hey, River Lady, I don't want just native plants in my garden. I want some of the new beautiful cultivars, like the gorgeous pink striped tall garden phlox. And I want zinnias. Well, let me tell you, go ahead, have your phlox, have zinnias. The insects will still enjoy the nectar, but choose your plants responsibly. In the case of butterfly bushes, they are a highly invasive plant that is replacing native vegetation. However, you can still have your butterfly bush. Just choose one of the new seedless varieties like this Miss Molly bush out of Proven Winners and make sure to add milkweeds to your garden. Let's talk a little bit about hummingbirds. A lot of people don't realize just how voracious hummingbirds are when it comes to eating insects. They will eat bees, gnats, spiders, flies. They love insects, and insects provide them with protein and fat. Nectar is good. Think of nectar like a sports drink. Nectar gives the hummingbirds sugar, which the hummingbirds definitely need. But nectar coming from a flower is much better for the hummingbird. It's like the difference between drinking a sports drink and eating an orange. 
So you want to plant flowers that the hummingbirds will enjoy, but you want to plant flowers that attract insects the hummingbirds like to eat. That's one of the reason I make sure that I always have cardinal flowers every season because hummingbirds love them and the insects hummingbirds love, love them too. As long as we're on the topic of birds, let's talk about what do you feed birds? Supplement the seeds that you offer in the feeders by offering a wide variety of plants for the birds. You'll get a wider variety of birds visiting your yard because the plants not only provide seeds for the birds, they also provide insects. And songbirds love insects. If you have a dead tree on your property, consider yourself lucky because that is a great addition to a wildlife habitat. Dead or decaying trees have insects and insects attract birds. If you're lucky, an owl might decide to make one of the openings in the tree place for their nest and you could even get bats. And don't roll your eyes, bats are wonderful. They eat a lot of mosquitoes and some birds might use the tree to announce their territory. Another way to create a wildlife habitat is to reduce your use of pesticides. The chemicals used in insecticides are highly toxic and they don't just kill insects we don't like. They kill beneficial insects, pollinators that we need in order to have beautiful flowers and apples in our apple orchards. And when our kids roll around on the grass that we've applied pesticides to, the pesticides get onto their skin and in their lungs. And the same thing goes for our pets. They get the pesticides on their skin. They eat the grass that has the pesticides on it. It's not just wildlife we need to worry about when we're planning our backyards and gardens. I am a big fan of using diatomaceous earth to control some of the insects in my gardens. This product will take care of ticks, ants, all sorts of crawling creatures. But the beauty of it is it's safe to use around pets and people. It won't harm ground feeding birds. It won't harm robins when they eat earthworms. And it won't harm toads, which are another way to control insects naturally. Providing cover for animals so that they feel safe and protected is another important addition to a wildlife habitat. Adding vegetation to your yard, like forsythia bushes or lilac bushes, helps birds feel protected. I like to have a variety of ornamental grasses in my garden. They provide great cover for animals, like little ducklings. And even though their seeds aren't viable, they still provide nourishment to the birds during the winter months. And they provide a comfy place to just chill out. When it comes to varmints like rabbits, I have a love-hate relationship with them. They love to eat my zinnias or my other flowers, and I hate to see my flowers get eaten. So one of the things I do is I plant vegetation that rabbits like. I have a special area in my garden that has parsley and carrots in it just for the rabbits. Because having a wildlife habitat means we welcome all creatures, great and small. One of the last areas I want to talk about is providing clean, fresh water. You want to make sure that if you have bird baths, that they are kept clean. Don't use chemicals in them. Just get yourself a scrub brush, a pair of rubber gloves, and scrub the feeder every few days. Yes, we know birds poop in the water. If the weather's been really, really hot, make sure you add fresh water daily because the water does heat up. And if you're lucky, you just might get some special visitors to your bird bath. Okay, that does it for this video on creating a wildlife habitat. There's so much more I would love to tell you, but this video would be way too long. So if you have topics you would like me to expand on, please post in the comments and I will make additional videos. One last thing I will mention, plant a winter berry bush. The birds and the squirrels will thank you. This is River Lady saying thanks for watching and happy gardening. Bye.